Today, we're gonna to talk about error handlers inside a website and how to properly handle them inside our website so we can actually show them properly and also lock them properly inside a log file instead of showing all the error messages directly inside a website. This has a lot to do with security as well as just in general, it's nice to have some proper handling on error handlers so we can actually display them in the way that we want it to be displayed inside our code. And properly handling any sort of error handlers is just something you should be doing anytime you create any sort of PHP application since you know there is sensitive information from time to time inside a error message and we don't want that to be obvious to the users. Now, commonly we do have three types of error messages you could be getting inside a website. It is going to be syntax errors, runtime errors, and logic errors. A syntax error is usually when we have any sort of PHP inside our PHP code that violates the rules of PHP, so to speak. So if I were to go inside my code here, you can see that I have a basic index page. If I go down inside my PHP tags and were to create something like, for example, a echo, and then duplicate this down on the next line, you can see that now we have these two echo statements and I am actually receiving a error inside my little text editor here because we do have a syntax error. And this is obviously because right now I'm actually missing a semicolon in between these lines here. So if we were to create a semicolon here, you can see the error message disappears. So now this is proper code. Um, just for people who are curious, we do not actually need to have a semicolon here at the end because we do have a implied semicolon because we have this closing tag down here at the bottom so you don't technically need to have that last semicolon. So if you have two lines of code like so, we do actually have a syntax error. So anytime you do anything inside your PHP code, this could also just be because you misspell something. So instead of saying echo, we said echoes, and then all of a sudden we receive another syntax error. Uh, so anytime you do anything inside your PHP code, you know, typos, misplacing a parentheses, forgetting to add a semicolon, that kind of thing, that is something that we call a syntax error. But we do also have something called a runtime error. And a runtime error is whenever we do any sort of code that technically is not gonna give us any sort of syntax error. So right now you can see we're not getting any sort of errors. I could run this inside my website. But if I were to actually try and do this, I would actually get a error message. And this is because when I actually run this inside my website, we cannot divide by zero because that is a math rule that you cannot do that. So if I were to go inside my browser here and actually try to run this, you can see, oh, okay, we get a error message. We have a uncaught division by zero error. So this is a error message we get as we're actually running the code inside the browser. And then we just plainly have something called logical errors, which is whenever we write some code inside our application and whatever what gets output inside the browser is not actually what we intend to output inside the browser. To give a small example here, this could, for example, be if I were to write this line of code here, then I have a number called 10 and I have a number called two, and this is called a multiplier inside my variable. So clearly, I want to multiply 10 by two, but by accident, I wrote a division inside the actual calculation down here. So I didn't actually intend for this to be a division. I wanted this to be a multiplication. So therefore, when I actually echo this out inside the browser, this is not going to give me the proper result because that is not what I intended to. So any sort of logical errors or errors that you might be getting that is not intended inside the application. And these are some of the different error messages we can get inside a website. And what we need to do as a developer is also know how to properly handle these types of errors. Because something you may not know is whenever it comes to security, we can talk about you know cross-site scripting and SQL injection and all of these different things, but we do also have some more simpler types of security things that we have to do. This is for example, when a user is using a website and they do something by mistake, maybe they created a logical error because they did something we did not intend them to do. Or maybe we created a mistake inside our code as a developer, it sometimes happens. And when that happens, there's going to be an error message displayed inside the browser. And that is not something we want to have displayed inside the browser, inside our actual website. It doesn't look very good when a user can see error messages inside a website. And another thing that's really important is it doesn't look very good to us as a developer if we actually show sensitive information inside the website in shape of error messages. So we have a couple of things we can do here. We can actually do one thing, which is called error reporting adjustment, which basically means we can go inside our code and we can adjust how error messages are getting output inside the browser. So right now we do actually have a setting inside the php.ini file, which is inside our PHP installation, 
where we go in and say that we do want to have error messages shown inside the browser. So let's go ahead and do another example here. Let's say inside my code, I just simply echo out a undefined variable. So right now we don't actually have this variable anywhere. Like it hasn't been defined. We didn't add a value to it. We didn't do anything. We just simply try to echo out a variable that does not exist. If I go inside my browser and refresh it, you can see we get undefined variable, undefined variable inside this file here on line 14. So right now we do have a undefined variable and it's clearly telling me so inside the browser, but this is not something we want to display it inside our browser because, you know, like I said, people can see it, doesn't look very good, but we can also have potential sensitive information leaking out inside the browser in this sort of way if we are not careful. So what we can do is we can actually go inside our website or inside our PHP code here, and we can create something called error underscore reporting. And then I can define that I want to have all sorts of errors being reported inside my website. Then I can go below here and say I want to access a php.ini setting and say I want to set something called display errors. So display errors, and we're gonna set this one to one, which means true. And by setting this here, we now just basically did the exact same thing as what it is now by default. So if we were to go inside my browser here, you can see that if we were to refresh the browser, oh, we still get the error message. Uh, so what we can do is we can actually set this one to zero. And then you're going to notice something a little bit different because if we were to go inside my browser and refresh it, you can now see oh, the error message disappears because we can no longer see it inside the website because we set display errors equal to false. But now if we cannot see the error message inside the website, how are we as the developers supposed to know exactly what the error is? Because, you know, yes, now the usability went up by a lot because they can no longer see errors and we don't have any sort of sensitive information showing inside the browser. But how can we see the error message now as the developer? Because we need to know, right? If something goes wrong, we need to know exactly what to do. And this is especially true when it comes to having a live version of a website. So right now, because this is locally on my computer, it's probably not going to hurt anything because I'm the only one seeing this website but once we do actually have this website online then we don't want other people to see our error messages so what we can do is we can use something called error handling functions in order to actually log our error messages inside an actual file inside our server so we can see all the error messages as the developer but we do not see them directly inside the website so the way that is going to work is by going inside our code I'm going to create a custom function so I'm going to say I want to create a function this one is going to be called custom error handler parentheses curly brackets and I'm going to have four different placeholders inside the parameters of this particular function here this one is going to be called error number error string error file and error line and then inside the function we can simply go in and actually echo out a error message now of course right now because we set this one to false we're probably not going to see it inside the browser so let's go ahead and change this one to true just so we can actually see what is going on here so inside my function we have this echo and we simply say that we want to echo out a string that is called error colon and then we have these brackets here and inside the brackets i'm going to insert the error number which is going to be the error code that is currently happening then afterwards, I want to take a error string, and this is going to be the actual error message. So for example, undefined variable is going to be what it displays inside this part here. Then I create a dash just to kind of separate things a little bit here. And then I want to have the error file colon, and then the error line. So which line inside this particular file is the error message on? So what I can do here is I can run a built-in function, which is actually called set error handler. So anytime we get any sort of errors inside our website, it is going to run this particular function. I'm going to tell it to inside my set error handler. So in this case, I can say we have set underscore error underscore handler. And we do need to make sure we spell this correctly. So set error handler. And then inside the parentheses, I'm just simply going to feed it the function that I want to run when I do actually get any sort of errors inside my website. So in this case here, I can say I have a custom error handler and I'm going to put that inside a string. So with this here, what we can do now is go back inside the website, refresh the browser, and then you can see we still get the error message, but now we actually have a little bit more control over how exactly this is going to be formatted inside the browser. So you can see we get our error and then we get the, the brackets with the error code inside of it, which is what we displayed down here. Then we get the error string, which is undefined variable, undefined variable, and then dash followed by the file name with the actual line name inside our code. So we can actually see where exactly the error message is. 
is. So in this sort of way, you can customize the error message in any sort of way as you want to down inside this echo here. But now, like we talked about, this is not something we should be displaying directly inside the website, inside a live version of the website. So what I can do here is I can actually go ahead and say, I don't want this to be displayed inside the website. Again, just by setting the display errors equal to false. And what I'm going to do instead down inside my function here is I'm actually going to say that I don't want to echo this out and I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call this one message. I'm going to set it equal to my error message here. And then I'm simply going to run a built-in function called error underscore log, which is going to allow for me to log a error message inside a separate text file. So what I can do here is I can say error underscore log parentheses, semicolon. The first parameter in here is going to be the actual error message that we want to display. So that is going to be our message up here, comma. Then I want to tell it to output this inside a text file, which is going to be done by setting a three as a parameter. We do have different ways we can lock error messages and three does mean that we're pointing to a file. So for example, we could go after here and say we want to point to a file that we're going to create inside our directory here. So in this case, we could call that file something like error, underscore log dot txt. And I'm just simply going to go in and create that right now. So inside my directory up here, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call that one error underscore log dot txt. And of course, this one is going to be empty right now because we don't actually have any sort of error messages. So if we were to save everything inside this file here, go back inside my error log, go inside my browser and actually refresh the browser because we do still have this undefined variable error. So if we were to actually refresh the browser, you can see, oh, we do get a error logged inside our error log file. I'm just gonna go ahead and text wrap everything so we have everything looking exactly like before. So as you can see, we do not have the actual error message shown inside the browser. So if we would go inside the browser, you can see it's not in there. But us, the developer, can actually see the error message inside this log file. So this is something that is a very good idea to do. Uh, we do have a small issue here where if we were to actually refresh the browser, you can see that we do still get more errors. Uh, but right now, you may not be able to tell, but this is not actually jumping down to the next line. So what I can do here is I can actually go back inside my code, inside my index file, and I can append a PHP underscore EOL constant when it comes to my error message over here, which basically represents a end of line character. So basically we jump down to the next line and then we can actually see the error messages below each other instead of having them all just in one big line right after each other. So if we were to go back inside my error log here, delete everything because I want to reset everything. So we're gonna save this, go back inside the browser and refresh it a couple of times. And then you can actually see we get all the different error messages again. But this time you can actually see that we get this new line indicator over here on the left side. So line one, line two, line three, line four, line five, and so on. So now every time we do actually get an error message, it's going to be displayed on a new line. So with that said, I do want to mention one more thing at the end here, which is that we do also have a set underscore exception underscore handler, which is going to handle exceptions instead of errors. So we do have two different types depending on how you want to handle both errors and exceptions inside your website. So with that said, now you know how to log a error message directly inside a log file instead of directly inside the website. So the users can see it and you may potentially leak sensitive information to the user. Uh, so to avoid all that, we now know how to do that using a log file. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you guys in the next video.